Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here with Mr. Kevin Dimmons. See, I almost said it wrong again there. <laughs> How's it going, my man? Doing good, man. Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. So um, if I'm not mistaken, it seems to be the normal case these days through Dennis, correct? Yeah. Dennis, we got yeah. connected. Yeah, he, he did yeah, like Dennis. seven yesterday. I'm like, dude, I only have so many podcast interviews available. <laughs> like dial it down but every time i meet somebody that he sends me uh we become instantly friends so i know it's a good thing so uh but what i like to do with my guests is kind of let them tell their story and and we'll kind of go from there so you're welcome to start wherever you want and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there yeah man. cool thank you so much so uh my story starts from an early childhood of uh of abuse so from zero to seven i was you know physically verbally and sexually abused or zero to 14. Sorry. So when my brain started taking recognition and actually making memory, uh, until about 14 years old, I was abused in some, one of those ways. Uh, the majority of my life, it was more verbal from my dad and more just striking fear in me because he, he was a drunk, he was a abusive alcoholic and he was far more physical with my mom than with me. Uh, sometimes it got physical, uh, but the majority of the time it was just telling me over and over, you know, like re-cementing the thought that I was a worthless piece of shit and I would never be anything. And I didn't deserve any type of love or affection, things like that. And he didn't necessarily say those things. It was just how he treated me that made me feel those things. And then obviously when you get slapped around and, and beat, that also makes you think that you're worthless. So I carried that with me and I didn't realize it for most of my life. And had I known what I know now at a younger age, I would have, I would have skipped so much shit, so much pain, so much misery, so much, the learning curve would have been so much shorter. So my goal in life now is to find that 16 year old me, that 30 year old me or shit, that 60 year old me that, you know, I'm not even 60 yet, but the guy who hasn't dealt with his pain, his trauma, and, and to help them work through that, because when we can separate ourselves from our story that we were forced into our entire life and start writing our own, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think what's super interesting is, like you said, I, I think that somebody that's been through that and, you know, for me, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, homelessness, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's an opportunity where I feel like most of the society, you know, programs or, you know, just, just in general, right? Like they're, they're trying right. to save the person after they've had the fuck up, right? You know, like or after they went to jail or after they're in rehab. And I think you and I share a similar passion where we want to, um, I want to get to that 16, 18, 21 year old. And I want to say like, Luke, you don't got to go through the divorce. You don't got to go through 20 years of alcoholism, you know, and yeah. you know how I, I think the most important thing is probably something everybody asks me all the time. Like, how did you finally remove yourself from your story? Like, because, and how did you stop beating yourself up? I, it, it was really one of those things where I just got tired of feeling the way I did. And I didn't understand what was wrong with me. And I, you know, uh, a lot of it, I, I, put on to the military service and the, the post-traumatic stress and, uh, the, you know, you get labeled with this PTSD, um, label and it's, it's absolute bullshit first off. Cause in my, like my opinion is a disorder is something you cannot get rid of. You're, you're with that the rest of your life. So when someone tells you, you have a disorder, that means I, for the rest of my life, I'm just supposed to be depressed and I'm supposed to be scared of fireworks. And I'm supposed to not want to talk to people and all that other stuff. Well, in reality, post-traumatic stress is very real and very normal. You go through a stressful situation, for example, at war, people shooting at you, you've got to work through that shit or seeing someone else die in front of you, stuff like that. But so I came home and I was dealing with that and I'd never was starting to feel better. And I honestly got to a point of 
hopelessness and I was willing to do anything to make it better. So I started to, I was like, you know what? Books are around. Let me start doing my own research. So I, uh, that was when I discovered my love for neuroscience and how the brain works and why we think the way we do and things like that. So it was really a trial and error process of shit. I'd say 10 years, um, to really figure out what was wrong with me. And once I started to be able to connect those dots, like you start reading about like behavioral patterns in a, um, adult male who, or an adult period who was abused as a child. And you're like, motherfucker, that was me. Like I, I did those things. I do those things. And, and you start, when you start to be able to understand the why behind you do why you do stuff, you start to really, you get some power back. You get, okay, I understand why I did that. Now I know how to move past it and not do that. So for me, it was a, a long process of, of trial and error and uh, just doing my own research and, and finding new, better mentors. I didn't have a father figure. I didn't have a role model growing up. So I had to start looking around like, okay, what kind of, what men out there have what I want and why do they have it? And then that's how I started picking new friends, creating better circles, um, just finding better mentors, I guess. What's interesting to me, and and I've seen it pretty evident through my coaching and consulting and like that, is that old men, they think they don't have patterns. Like it's really cracks me up. Right. And it's like one of those things where it's like, dude, it's so obvious. Like, like, you're, you know, right before it's going to get good, you're going to self-sabotage, right? But what's interesting about you and I is the reason that we could see it so clearly is because that was us. Like, the reason that I know victimhood is because I lived it for 20 years. The reason that I know, you know, drinking every day for eight years is because I lived it, right? And I had a great coach, one of my, the guy that helped me through my addiction and my divorce and, and, and so many things and, you know, is a brother to me. You know, I I started coaching and I was, you know, you're stressed out when you're, when you're starting coaching. Oh my God. You know, same, same with podcasts. How am I going to get guests? Oh my God. You know? Um, And he says, you know, Austin, you never have to worry about getting clients because you only coach what you've been through. Yeah. People will see themselves in you. They will see themselves. And, and, And so, you know, when you started coming out of your own story and you started setting the thing, was it health? that got you locked in? Was it, was it, was it a mentor? Was it a system that you use? Like, what was the, what was kind of the thing that, 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 that people can lean on that to kind of pull them out of that despair? Uh, I, when I first started coming out of the, I guess you call it the darkness or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was, I could, could, I tried to focus on what I could control and what I could control at that time was my fitness. So I, I held myself to a very strict routine with my fitness. Like I worked out at a certain time every day. I still do that to this day. Um, 9 a.m. Actually, sorry. 8 a.m. Is, is when I start my workout time. You know, prior to that, morning routine, meditation, breathing, cold shower, all that. Um, but I could control my fitness. So that's what I focused on. Uh, I should say that you said you mentioned a coach and my, my biggest mentor moving through my darkest times was a guy named Akshay Nanavati. He, uh, he's the author of Fearvana. He's one of my closest friends and I'm blessed that he is now me and him are now working together to grow the movement of Fearvana. And, uh, so I read his book and he was a, you know, he was a Marine came home, had survivor's guilt, went through, some really hard times. And I read his book and it just struck me in such a way that he was combining the neuroscience aspect with um, really pressing into your fears and and understanding that the greatest things in life are beyond your fear on the other side of your fear. So it really kind of just hit me the right way. You know, sometimes you read a book and this uh, one book, it's like, man, that's really, like it changes your life. It's overused. People say books change their lives, but sometimes they really do. Um, so I reached out to him and I told him how much his book meant to me. And he instantly responded with a, uh, a video response, not even a voice note, nothing like video. And from there it turned into a cultivated relationship where eventually I ended up hiring him as my coach. That is when the whole, the shift really happened. 
when I started piecing all of the pieces, putting all the pieces together with morning routines, structuring my days, planning out time blocks for work, setting um, long-term, short-term goals, like all the stuff I work with my clients now. Uh, I was originally taught from him and, and a lot of other mentors. And then some of the pieces, as you know, you know, in coaching, you pick up your little niches and things you think work best along the way. But uh, I think the number one thing you can do is learn from somebody who's been there. Just pick up the book, you know, cause that's how I do it. You know, I'm excited you yeah. know, because, you know, people ask me all the time. It's super interesting, right? When you, you, you coach people, um, they ask me to say, you know, what do you read? And, and I said, well, I read something for you and I read something for me. And they're like, what does okay. that mean? And I'm like, well, I'm working private equity. We're buying businesses. I'm building businesses. That's where I spend most of my time. But what I focus on is uh, patterns, neuroscience, mm -hmm. uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, it helps me, of course. But but uh, creating habits, creating sustainable consistency, because, you know, we owe it to our clients to stay studied up on the best, you know, tactics and, and reasons why. And, and, you know, we as a society throw around a lot of labels. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really easy to package stuff as, is, is, you know, you're addicted to alcohol and you're addicted to thing and you're, and this thing is, and, and ultimately what I found is uh, addiction runs, the seed of addiction runs pretty parallel in most things. And addiction could be, yeah you know, comments on social media, addiction could be like Netflix. It doesn't really matter. So if we don't understand the reason behind, if we don't understand the neuroscience behind why the subconscious mind, you know, does everything for the body, if we don't understand how patterns get put together, then we're, we're really doing ourselves a disservice. And, and to be honest with you, we're making a decision uh, based off of emotion instead of actual facts and, and understanding yeah. that the separation of attachment to me has single-handedly changed my entire life. Absolutely. No, it's, uh, you know, you make a permanent decision off a temporary emotion and it's never a good, it's never a good thing. I came up with this last week for a client cause he's going through some stuff. I said, you can make, you can be angry and that's your right, but you can't, you don't have the right to make an angry, angry decision. I like that. Yeah. And it's, like it, 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 it's, it's saying to yourself, like I'm in control I accept that I, you know, one of the things that's very interesting with me is like people, uh, what I found they do is they shame cycle themselves to death, right? They're saying, well, like, no, I have to be happy all the time. No, like you can be grumpy, like it's okay. But the moment that you accept that you can be grumpy is the moment that you can start changing for the happiness that you're seeking. And that's kind of like the, the thing that we don't teach. It's yeah. like, oh, you know, you're just supposed to be like skipping rocks all day. And it's like, no, dude, like business is hard. Clients fucking, you know, don't show up. They don't pay. Like, you know, we lose money. The appraisal came in low. Like, that's OK. But then I always I think what's elevated myself in business and just in general is I say, OK, OK, hold on. Are you making the decision from your ego or are you actually making a calculated decision? And I was talking to a guy yesterday who runs a couple of businesses and he said, you know, there is some power by not dealing with that. Like, let's say you're in a business situation, it's getting heated and saying, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm going to walk away right now. I'm not in the right place to make it and then do it the next day. And like, even today for me, I made a decision about something that I had to invest in to go to somebody's thing that was going to be, was going to mess with my schedule, was going to cost too much money. And I felt obligated to do it because he's a close friend. And I finally got to a place where I said, you know what, I'm just going to speak my truths and, and tell him what I need right now. And while I've been stressing out for a week, he was like, sounds good, man. I, I appreciate you being honest with me and, and I know it will. And man, to like step yeah. up into that was like, that was like the biggest moment for me ever to like finally say what I needed in my life and not, even though I care about yeah. that person. Yeah, no, it's so. Uh... I was just talking to a client recently about um, having some troubles with uh, with his wife. And I would, you know, you can try to say the right things and do the right things. And I'm guilty of this too. And you can try to do all that, but you're going to get exhausted doing it. And even if she agrees or that person takes it the right way and, you know, you avoid any pain or confrontation, you're still internally going to be suffering from it. You're still going to be not happy about it. So rather than do that, just be upfront, honest, 
they're either going to take, they're going to take it either way. They're going to either be upset with you and not understand where you're coming from, or they're going to take the time to say, okay, honesty, transparency, that's what matters. So if they're at least being honest with me, then now we can move forward because it's not a personal emotional thing anymore. It's just reality. That person feels that way. You feel that way. Now let's figure out how to make it work. Yeah. And it's this weird thing called being a grown up. It's like this yeah, crazy thing, yeah. huh? you know, and, it's, and, uh, you know, I'm curious cause, cause I've had some, some shifts in the last couple of months with my father, um, you know, through what you went through and everything that happened, like, like mentally, where is your mind with that relationship at this point? That's a curious uh, thing for me. Well, he died, uh, okay. back in, he, he was, uh, when was it? I just got home from the army. So it was 2014, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he died and it was actually kind of crazy. He had cancer and he was at home, you know, in, 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 in their home. And, uh, my sister and my mom had repeatedly tried to get me to come see him and I had no interest. And then, uh, one last time she, my sister called me and my sister had, you know, I hold her at a very high pedestal because she, she raised me. Like I moved into her house when I was eight years old. So when she spoke, I, I listened, you know? So she said, I think your dad is hanging on just to say goodbye. And as much as I didn't want to go talk to him, I did it. And I'm glad I did. Um, I, we, you know, I, I talked to him and was asking him about like, why he did those things. But at the end of it, I told him it's all right, because I forgive you. And it was, I don't know. I think it was minutes later he died. So, and a lot of times people are like, how could you possibly forgive him? And in that very moment, if I'm being honest with you, I don't think I did. I think I knew he needed to hear that. And then my goal was eventually to actually be able to do it. So what I have found since then is I forgave him to forget him. Like what he did and repeatedly, and, and, and even when he was, he was sober and learning what he did, waking up in jail, realizing that he was in jail because he was beating his family or waking up in jail and realizing the reason he was in jail is because he chased his 14 year old son of the house and tried to try to kill me with a knife. Like in my mind, I just don't have time for it. So, cause I made a decision years ago that I wasn't going to give anything or anyone that was holding me back or toxic to me, my time, my time only goes towards my friends, my family that I love and loves me and, and things that are, that I care about. So I think I forgave him to forget him. And I actually wrote about that in my book that is not done yet, but it's so uh, power, it was, so powerful. You know, most people can't do yeah. that. And they just, you know, I had not by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> same, same situation, but I had somebody, you know, screw me over pretty good two years ago. And it was just driving me bonkers. Like I couldn't get, I couldn't move on, you know? Yeah. And I, 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 something hit me when I was walking I was like, I sent him a text and I was like, Hey man, like whatever happened, whatever reason you emotionally did that. It's okay. Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's actually a gift that you gave me. So thank you. And he just sends back like, dude, I basically haven't slept in three months because of this. Yeah. He's still apologizing two and a half years later. And, and, and now we have a great relationship and, and, and I can find peace in that and, and, and understand. And there's such power, like personally, when you just say like, Hey man, like, like, you know, I get it. Like, and, and the thing is, it's like, I don't think we take enough time and, and look, nobody's this, you know, nobody's discounting anything they did, but we're, you know, people make decisions. People, people abuse alcohol. People abuse themselves that they abuse others. And, and, uh, you know, I had a client who I coached with yesterday and we worked through a story work and it was like his middle school principal. And like this, the shit that this person said to him was like, I expected him now at 35 still, 
And we went through it and, and I changed every word of what he said to that guy that that high school counselor thought about himself. And he was like, oh my God. Like every word he used to describe me was actually the way he felt about himself. So really that has nothing to do with me. Boom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's uh, the power of words. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. Yeah, hundred percent. So if somebody is listening to this and somebody is in the job, they don't like, they're in an abusive relationship, they're, they're unhealthy. They're not exactly where they want to be. They feel stuck. You know, what is your advice to them? Kind of uh, your step-by-step process that you've seen with your clients that's the most beneficial for them to, um, as I would say, you know, turn the Titanic in a different direction. Well, I would say as far as what I, what I do with my clients, uh, I do a lot of story work. Like you said, like pen to paper is the most powerful way for you to distance yourself from a situation and, and actually see it for what it is when you can give it a start point and an ending point, And then you can read and figure out where the problem actually was and realize if the problem was you, or if the problem was somebody else doing something to you, if somebody does something to you, you have no control over that. I'm, uh, um, pretty big into stoicism. So more fati, love one's fate. You in this game of life, you control how one person plays, and that's you. If somebody else does you wrong, that's on them. They'll have to figure it out. All you can do is decide what you're going to do about it. How can you fix it for yourself? Sometimes that means you have to go through a long process of rebuilding, you know, credit, things like that. Like I'm very familiar with that, with the going through a lot of debt because of a bad money mindset slash situation where my parents were using my credit to pay their electric bill while I was deployed, you know? So I came home in debt. So I had a choice to make. Am I just going to blame them and hate them the rest of my life? Or am I going to fix it? Because blaming them and hating them is they're not going to pay my bill. So you have to acknowledge that you were in control of what you do and who you're with and the time that you put towards whatever you want in life. Love that. No, hundred percent. I mean, that's, you know, my ex-wife, you know, same, same situation, thought she was paying her car off and her mom was using it to gamble. And, and you know, it's just, you yeah. know, at, at this point, nothing really blows me away to be honest with you. Um, no. You know, and so um, when you're talking to those, you know, I think one of my favorite questions to ask is as you sit today, you know, what advice would you like to give your 18 year old self? The advice I would give my 18 year old self is that uh, I like to use the phrase, this too shall pass. And the fact that I know you really, you think that this is the worst of times and you think that, you know, nothing could be worse and you have no hope and no chance, but just realize that, you have been living a story that was written by the people who, who wanted to hurt you, who did hurt you. When you can, when you're able to, and at the age where I believe 16, 18 is when that really can take place, um, to, to first off, write your story down, distance yourself from it, do the deep work, do the story work, then start writing your own story. So you're no longer making choices and decisions. There's some men that are 60 years old that are still letting a 15 year old little boy that's scared to come out of the closet because he doesn't want to get beat all the decisions that kid is deciding his happiness, his friendships, his relationships, his, his business success, his, his confidence, everything. And, and when you can finally make that shift and start writing your own story, that's when you can truly start living and achieving the life you deserve. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And if people want to find out more about you, they want to follow your journey. How would they do that? Uh, they can follow me on Instagram at scarred and unbeaten. Uh, Facebook is just my name, Kevin Demons. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a Calendly link right on Instagram on my profile. So if you want to schedule a session with me, it's free to do a strategy or whatever and get to know each other. That's, that's right on there. Just click the link. How's the uh, book coming? It's coming. It's, it's yeah, coming, man. I, I, I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> I just, you know, it's like, uh, it, it's, yeah. dude, that is a labor of love, man. 
every time I read it, and well, it's been, a, yeah. it's been, it's been, it's been a really good journey for me because it's really made me dive deep into each one of my stories of my childhood and, and not mm. just, not just say them because you can say shit like a robot, but when you actually have to write it down in detail, like I have to go into the character and, and write it as if I'm there again, you know, what do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I feel? Like that's some deep fucking work right there. So it. it's, it's been very beneficial, but it's every time I start writing again, I'm like, I should change this. You know, my perspective on life has changed. I should change how I put this and word it in here. So at some point I have to really just like put a hard time. Like, you know what? It doesn't matter what you think anymore. Send it to the editor. We're done. <laughs> one, of the, one of the, one of the greatest things I ever heard in a book that really like hit it home for me was John Maxwell said in the book, he said, you know, the only concern about writing in a book is the moment that you publish it. You're, you, thought, <laughs> you thought something different and he's like it kind of, that's why you kind of do updates and edits you know but yeah. but 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 that's what's exciting is that, is that regardless of where if you've changed what you've wrote will hit somebody whether it's that year two years three years it lives forever so yeah i'm super excited to see you continue that journey and i can't wait to read it when it comes to that but guys if you like this episode send it to a friend share it with somebody to get some value and we'll see you next time Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.